welcome back and now we are going over Adexa Wow GB paper 1 uh, 2018 and we are doing question number one okay in some diploid organisms haploid cells are produced by meiosis by the way uh, the only cells that are produced by meiosis that are haploids in plants and animals are always sex cells or gametes so, the diagram shows an animal cell at various stages during the first division of meiosis, and that's because uh, meiosis has two divisions, so that's why they've said the first division. Identify the correct sequence in the diagram that shows the first division of meiosis, okay? Just like mitosis, meiosis will also undergo PMAT. And PMAT means uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In meiosis, you will have prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, and then back again to prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. And so prophase is the first step in which we have the breakdown of the nuclear membrane, uh, the disappearance of the nucleolus, and the, conden the t condensing of the... Uh, DNA and then the appearance of the centrioles and then further and then continuing on to prophase you will have uh, condensed, uh, co sorry, a condensed more condensed DNA they become more visible now and the centrioles there's always two centrioles and so they become more visible as they start to migrate away from each other and you have a more breakdown of the nuclear membrane and you have complete uh, disappearance of the nucleolus and that would signal the end of prophase and the start of metaphase in which the uh, the now visible chromosomes as opposed to uh, DNA the cr visible chromosomes have uh, lined up in the middle so you can remember uh, metaphase M for middle they will line up in the middle and the centrioles will have migrated to the opposite poles and they will uh, release spindle fibers that will attach onto what we call centromeres of the chromosomes and that's basically centro center which is the tiny middle bit over here seen on the chromosomes and then we will have the beginning of anaphase in which the spindle fibers will contract pulling the chromosomes away from each other and uh, after that has happened we will start to have sort of uh, uh, a nuclear envelope, sorry, nuclear membrane reforming around the now separated chromosomes and would look like something like this. And so if we start to separate these diagrams, because we have five diagrams and only four stages, that will indicate that there are two of the same stages occurring, uh, but just they're showing you the beginning and the late. And so the first step that must occur is the breakdown of the nuclear membrane. And so that gives us these two. And if we decide between these two, we need to have the earliest one will not have as much condensed DNA, so it'll indicate it's this. It will also still have the nucleolus, which is this. And if we look, the centrioles here are further apart than they are over here. This all indicates that the first step is number three. So write down three. Now, we have gotten rid of this. Now we have four. Once again, we said that there's a step that's going to be repeated again, and now it looks like we still have late prophase, and so we still have the spindle, oh, sorry, the centrioles, but they are more visible now as two separate centrioles, whereas here we only had what seems like one. The DNA is more condensed than we have over here, and the nuclear membrane is breaking down more. This all indicates that this is still reaching the end of uh, metaphase, sorry, prophase and so we can put number two as the next step cross this out we have completed prophase now we said metaphase middle it's when the chromosomes all line up in the middle of the equator and so we are between these two but we're going for this because it seems to make sense that well they line up the centrioles release spindle fibers that will attach to the centromeres before and then afterwards they will be pulled apart. Here they're being pulled apart and so therefore number four must become 
become, sorry, must be before number one, because in number one, the chromosomes are being pulled apart, whereas in number four, they're getting ready to be pulled apart. And therefore, number four is metaphase, uh, getting ready for anaphase, which will be number one. And so that would mean we have number four as the next step. And so we cross this out, and then they've been, they're going to be pulled apart. The chromosomes are being pulled apart as the spindle fibers contract, and that will signal that the cell is anaph anaphase, which is this. So afterwards comes number one. That would leave us with the last option, which is telophase, and that is when the nuclear uh, membrane is starting to reform against the uh, uh, to separate the uh, the different now pulled apart chromosomes on the opposite sides to produce two cells from the first cell that we had, and that will indicate we are in telophase, the last step. And so three, two, four, sorry, three, two, four, one, five is C. There we go. So A is C. Now, identify the parts labelled P and Q. Right. P. Well, we've said this was the nuclear envelope, so I might say the nuclear membrane. And um, it's acceptable. You can say the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. Um, here, they prefer the term nuclear envelope, but a nuclear membrane should be fine. So P would be... Nuclear membrane. So Q. We go to Q, and the Q. What that looks like if we draw it over here. So that's our chromosome. We have a middle bit over here, mm -hmm. and that's what Q is, and that is what we call a centromere. And that's what the spindle fibers attach to when they pull apart the chromosomes. And remember, centro sounds like central, right in the middle. And so Q is what we call a centromere. Yeah. Okay. In mammals, meiosis occurs during eugenesis and spermatogenesis. Describe how the products of eugenesis differ from the products of spermatogenesis in mammals. Okay, so eugenesis is the creation of ova and spermatogenesis is the creation of sperm cells. And so we have to describe how the products differ from each other. And the first thing more, the first answer is, well, the ova is always bigger than the sperm cell. And so we say ova is... Oops, sorry. Is larger. And that's one mark, it's larger. The, sp uh, the second mark is, well, in sperm cells, when the sperm reaches the ova, it on the he in the head it has an acrosome and the acrosome as soon as it touches the ova it will release digestive enzymes that will break down the first layer the zona uh, pellucida of the ova and so those uh, enzymes that are present in the acrosome are only present in sperm cells not in ova and so we say the sperm cell cells have acrosome and so the sperm And another one is the very obvious one is that sperm cells have a tail or a flagellum, whereas ova don't. So sperm equals flagella slash tail. Technically, flagellum because it's only one tail, and uh, flagellum is the scientific accurate term, but tails also accepted here. And so far we have three. And the other one we can say is that the ova cells have zona pellucida, whereas sperm cells do not. And the zona pellucida is that just that, that outer cell layer that the ova cells have. Ova will have a zona pellucida. Uh, 
exclusive. And um, I guess one of the obvious thing is that while spermatogenesis pr- produces sperms and eugenesis produces uh, uh, overcells, but they're looking for more, more deeper answers than just saying that. So I, that won't be accepted here. And uh, in other exam papers, you can write that, but don't use that as it will get you the mark. They look for more different features rather than spermatogenesis, spermatogenesis produces sperms and eugenesis produces over. But you can definitely write that just in case in other papers. But these are the more accurate uh, differences. You can also say that um, spermatogenesis produces more sperms than more sperm cells than eugenesis produces over. You do have a high number of sperm cells being produced and um, that's it. That's four marks right there and those are the obvious answers and that's it for question number one.